doodle on a motorcycle invited me to travel to California to train with 2018 International GS Trophy finalist and certified BMW International off-road instructor, Jocelyn Snow. Hello, beautiful people. My name is Amanda Zitto. I've been riding motorcycles since 2012. I normally ride about 70% on road, 30% off. I've crossed the USA four times now. I'm super excited for the class this weekend. I've always wanted to train with Jocelyn Snow. So this is a dream come true for me. Super stoked to be kicked in the butt by somebody shorter than me. <laughs> I would be doing this training on the 2022 Honda Africa Twin Adventure Sports DCT that Honda has kindly let me continue to borrow for 2023 and Doodle rode across the country from her home in Georgia so she could do this training again, but on her own bike, the Triumph Tiger 900 GT Pro. I don't think that Jocelyn Snow needs an introduction amongst the adventure riding community, but just in case you don't know who she is, I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, I'm Jocelyn Snow. I'm an adventure rider. I've been riding motorcycles for well over 35 years anyway. I really enjoy coaching. Uh, and helping riders get that aha moment. It's the, the best feeling ever. Before we even get on bikes, first we have to start with the basics. Although these are not any basics I've ever experienced before. So these are our handlebars, okay? Now with your hands on the hammer position, I'm gonna be the front end of the motorcycle and I'm gonna knock you off balance. I don't have to try too hard. Even big man, man, a strong girl, but no problem. <laughs> All right. Now, whew, grab your screwdrivers. Yeah, she, she's knocking myself off. <laughs> yeah, well, so you have more strength this way. I knew that Doodle and Amanda were going to be capable and able to do everything I threw at them. There was no doubt in my mind. I did, however, clearly see doubts in their minds. So. What we had to overcome wasn't, wasn't like their skill level, it was more so in their head. From here down, that's work. You go to work nine to five every day, right? From your waist up, this is the party. Work, vacation. So if I see you like, mm, no, you're supposed to be on vacation. I think my favorite part was just climbing in and out of the bowl. I really? Yes, that was I my, loved that. that was a scary. That was one of the scarier <laughs> parts for me. Cause then, cause the last time I did the bowl, they didn't. There, all those lines were not there. You could just go in wherever you ended up, and then. But now it's like you go d up the hill, and then all of a sudden there's this tight turn right after the hill. I'm like, uh, that wasn't there last time. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the, the the dirt bowl was scarier for me. After riding the bowl, we took a small break, and when I came back to my bike, I couldn't find my key. Or so I thought. She lost her key? Sometimes a motorcycle breaks down in the wilderness. Oh my god. So we need to get her out of the woods and back to safety. Uh, <laughs> you took her key! So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna learn how to tow a bike. So the way I like to tow a bike is the tower, which is you, gonna put this around your foot peg here. 
that's just gonna come up and over the peg like this. <clears throat> now, I didn't go ahead and, and put it all the way on, right? That's a bit of a safety issue. You can't get rid of it if you need to, but here where it's here, if emergency happened, you lift your foot and this thing could just pull off. So we're gonna have you, you'll put your foot down and that'll keep the peg from flexing. You're gonna be the tower. Now for the towee, it goes on the other peg. Because you need to shift and you need to break. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna roll this thing up and around maybe a couple of times. And then Amanda will step her foot down on here to hold it. If at any time she feels like she's in trouble or unstable or you guys need to disconnect, she can simply lift her foot and it will let go, okay? Always be mindful of your toe -y, where she might be. So your left turns can be fairly tight. Your right turns need to be pretty wide. If you remember this morning, you guys drew sticks. You were red and you were blue. Red team, blue team. So this is another clutch drill. And what we want you to do is using your clutch only with your spear in your hand. Each one of these tubes has a number. You're gonna sink the spear inside one of the tubes. Now number one, that's a pretty big tube. Number five, that's pretty skinny. No dabbing, not like you can dab anyway. <laughs> no stalling, no tipping over. And we're gonna keep score to find out who's buying dinner. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Raise your swords. Let the games begin. Woo hoo hoo. Kick stands up. And start your engines. One thing I didn't take into consideration is Amanda has a DCT. So in order to make the bike go forward, you you need you need throttle. Yes. She needs to have the throttle in order for the bike to go forward because it's a DCT clutch. So I can do it with my left hand. Uh-huh. So if I'm on this side and okay. we both go down together. Same time. Red team, six. Blue team, eight. Awesome! <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? You want to recount? What happened? Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. <laughs> well, I was never that good at math. <laughs> I get really nervous about not performing what I think is my standard. 
Um, so when I fail multiple times at something that I think I should just have been able to do, then my brain is like, oh, you suck. <laughs> and it takes a little bit for me to get over that. Um, most of the time it just translates to me wanting to do that thing over and over and over again until I do it correctly. Don't talk yourself out of it. Instead of saying, oh no, oh God, I want you to say, you got this. Because you gotta have the confidence to pull this stuff off. As soon as you vocalize in your helmet, oh no, your whole body reacts. Your brain goes, oh, she said, oh no? Cramp down, I can't run the clutch, I can't you know, have a smooth throttle, I'm in panic mode, I stopped breathing, my eyes dropped, everything goes to heck, and then I look for a parking spot and I bring this big heavy head helmet, looks down, the bike tips over. Now, everything's success. You feel that, like you're going, where is she taking me right now? You're just gonna go, I got this. I'm gonna go to the teeter-totter now. Okay. Teeter-totter looks a lot like that bridge. Uh-huh. Okay? See the angle of the bridge and the teeter-totter? Uh -huh. About the same. You have to collect the bike at the midpoint, meaning get on the clutch, get your weight back, because you need to slow down, you need to get, get dragging that rear brake, you know, you can use a little front too, but you just want to slow the bike down and come down in control. If you just continue straight, you'd be like, flying to the neighbor's house. <laughs> okay. The first time, I'm going to demo it a couple times. You guys go walk right over to it. Watch me. So you see kind of the transition point, which could be slightly different depending on the weight of the bike and the rider and stuff. But better to go forward if you lose your balance than to stop. If you stall on the teeter-totter, we will do our best to catch you. But it's hard to put your feet down on the teeter-totter. It's narrow. That tight hammer grip can pull the bike so it doesn't go in a straight line. And it's kind of important to go in a straight line over that teeter-totter. <laughs> so if you want to be straight, you want to be relaxed. Waist up is what? Party. Yeah. Vacation. Yes. Waist down is what? Work. That's right. Put this to work. Let this relax. Okay. Really light grip on the bars. Even if you have to in your head. I mean, you're going to be nervous the first time you go over there, of course. Until you do it and you go, this is nothing. The thing is that I believe you can do it, but I need you to believe you can do it. It's That's just a hill. The problem. It's just a hill. That's right. But you need to go really slow on the downside. Okay. Because the downside doesn't show up right away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Shall we talk about what was the scariest thing today that we did? For me, it was a teeter-totter. Yeah, definitely a teeter-totter, even though I didn't end up doing it because I had an anxiety attack. You didn't end up doing it? No, I didn't. You totally could have done it, though. You did, <laughs> you did the bridge just fine. I every did the bridge okay, but every time like I thought about doing the teeter-totter, my brain like shut down. Yeah, yeah. It's so mental. Yeah. But you, like, I fell on the bridge. You didn't fall on the bridge. <laughs> I think it's because like we got to play in the bowl a bunch, and mm -hmm. so like the bridge was way easier for my brain to be like, oh, yeah, this is just a hill. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I think it was the narrowness of the teeter-totter that really got in my brain and then trying to think, oh, I need to do this slower. Yeah. If, I mean, if you were already like anxious about it, like when you're on it, like I basically had a panic attack when I was on it, but then I got off it already so fast. I'm like, oh, okay, it's over. <laughs> well, like, cause, cause you're up on it and then it doesn't go down for a second. So it looks like you're about to ride off of a cliff. <laughs> yeah, if I didn't start to get my attack until I was on the thing, it would have been Fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, that is not, not, that's not how it happened. Mm -hmm. Keith Code uh, wrote a book for road racing, and one of his theories that gained kind of popularity for us road racers was something about, and I might not quite say it right, but something about like you, you get a piggy bank when you jump on your bike for wherever you're going to go. So we're going to go for an afternoon ride, and I have a piggy bank with like $10 in it. And every time my attention is spent on something else like oh this collar is bugging me or my you know i have a rock in my boot or i feel like i can't reach my clutch lever brake lever or every time i go 
little things like that. Every time your attention goes somewhere else, you spend some money. So the rock in the boot maybe is, you know, $1.50, and then later on it bugs me again. There's another, you know, when you spend all your money out of your piggy bank, you don't have anything more to spend, so you can't concentrate as much on your ride and you're kind of, I guess, you're spent. So it's a neat theory, and I, I do think it's important. Okay, ladies. I've been telling you and telling you, you need to look up, look ahead, look where you want to go. We did the dowel exercise to kind of illustrate that. But what happens when you don't have any eyesight and it's taken away from you? I don't know, maybe it's a big windstorm or I don't know, you get something in your eyes or what happens? You gotta use all your other senses. You gotta feel the wind, listen to the wind chimes, right? You wanna be super light on the bars because you wanna feel the grass. So I'm gonna give you these special goggles. You seen these before, Doodle? Oh yeah. <laughs> These are uh, blackout goggles. I'm gonna go ahead and have you put them on. Okay. And before you do, you're gonna go ahead and look at Steve, and Steve is gonna have the orange cone on the other end, okay. and that's where you're gonna visualize that you wanna go. Okay. Then you put the goggles on, cause you're gonna take a picture. Now you showed me yesterday that you could close your eyes and negotiate an obstacle. I saw that, right? <laughs> and then when you're ready and you're comfortable, I'll give you the cue to go ahead and move forward. When you go forward, you need to kind of gas and commit. I will be with you the whole time. Unless you're in second gear wide open. I can't run that fast. <laughs> but I will be with you the whole time, making sure you're safe. Okay? So when you're ready, if you hold that uh, over your face, I'll help you with the strap. There you go. And then when you find a spot where it's pretty dark, we'll check it. Awesome, here we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Nope, gotcha, here you gotcha. All right. I believe in you. Go, 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 up you go, up you go. Beautiful, wow, nice. Pulling up on the bars. This is great. I'm feeling the bumpiness. Let's see what we got here. There's a little extra throttle for me there. Don't worry, I would have thrown my body in front of you if I had to. So, um, a little tight on the, on the grips. So you probably couldn't tell that you hit the smooth. I tried to give you a, a hint by going <laughs> like that, but it's a, it's a lot. The first time is always the scariest. I was determined to redeem myself, so I asked if I could do it again. Focus that thing in, no problem. Perfect, let's go. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, beautiful. You can do a little more speed. There you go, a little more speed, a little more speed, a little more speed. It's easier to balance, a little faster, a little faster. Gotcha, all right. How do you feel? You are. So you go ahead and you. He is. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to need a little more speed uh, to balance, right? No problem. You're doing like a slow race. This one, I don't have to run. I enjoy it. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and uh, once you get up, you go. Yep, that's right where he is. You got it. Beautiful. Okay, we're getting off the grass like it whoa beautiful all right i'm gonna let you see where you are then it was time to put our training to the test the night after the first day where i took them to some neighbor's property and i hadn't been there in a quite some time to pre-ride it. It was kind of a spontaneous thing. We just happened to call him up. He's like, sure, come over. It had been raining for several days. I didn't know what to expect. Um, so we were actually heading over in a true adventure. This is 600 and something acres of I don't know what we're gonna get. 
Um, and it started out pretty cool, it was great, but it got very slippery. There were some deep water crossings. It was muddy um, and it was challenging. And at one, then it was dark. So let's put all those together. Every time I would look back in my mirror because I'm having a hard time like making sure I'm staying up on two wheels, I would look back and here those two headlights are following me. It was amazing. So um, yeah, that was the best part. That was my, that was one, one point where I thought, ooh, this, this might be tricky getting everybody out of here. And they surprised me and I think they surprised themselves. So yeah. How do you feel about the whole weekend, how the, the whole experience. This has been amazing. Yeah. And like, it definitely always reminds me, like there's always things like, like remembering to put all of your weight on the outside peg and not just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like that kind of stuff really has, to, I feel like needs to be, my brain needs to be reminded. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, and then it clicks again and everything's fine. Yeah. And you can really only get that feedback if somebody like who is an actual coach can give you that feedback. Mm -hmm. It's like different when your friends are like, oh, well, I know you're doing this wrong. And like, how much can you trust that? Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or all the people in the comment section. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all different. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is probably like my favorite thing ever. Like that I've ever done in motorcycling. Aww. It's like all these obstacles are so cool and crazy and it just it's just it feels like I mean it's literally a playground but on bikes. Yeah. They did really well. I feel like they both gained some confidence to see Amanda overcome some fears on the height obstacles like the bridge and stuff like that like that's that's very stressful, you know, if you can do it. When we went into the dirt ball, um, that is technical and challenging. I wasn't sure how it was gonna go. I've taken students in there and we just have a pickup bike fest, but they were very focused, um, practicing their breathing, and um, it looked like they were having a good time, which was really cool. So I was uh, very impressed. Very proud of both of them. I hope they come back because I have unfinished business with these two, so. <laughs>